Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday, March 10th. We're in Vancouver at the Metal Investor Forum. Um, I'm here with uh, one of the uh, presenting companies that I invited. Craig Perry is the chairman of Visa Silver. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, Visa just put out a very impressive resource last week, about 105 million silver equivalent ounces, very high silver and gold grades. Uh, I think this is a great project. Uh, they're drilling with 10 rigs, going to be 13 tons of news for the rest of this year. There'll be another resource update later in the year. Um, I'm going to touch on a couple of things with Craig. One thing I want to mention is that the CEO, uh, Mike Connard, is actually in the U.S. on a roadshow. And, and this probably seems like a nothing thing. But the other thing they recently announced is they have moved up to NYC Amex. So Visa is VZLA on the venture and VZLA on NYSE Amex. And I think that is actually going to be quite important because other silver developers I follow, like specifically Silvercrest, I know 70 or 80 percent of their volume now is in the U.S. And that's simply a matter of, you know, shoe leather, I think, literally going down and, and, and talking to funds, talking to high net worth. And that's actually what Mike is doing right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some impact from that in the next couple of weeks, because obviously with what silver and gold are doing, it's a pretty good time to be delivering high grade silver and gold results, which you did again this morning for the nth time, put out some more great holes. Um, what it, can you tell me a little bit about this, this Capella? Cause Capella is one of the veins at Panuco. It's a little different cause it's not, it's not sub vertical the way most of the other ones you've been drilling are. But Mike mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago, Capella, there's these sort of more, you know, they're not sub horizontal, like 30 degrees or something. That's sort of what the Mexicans were mining by and large? Yeah, yeah that's right. We, we knew of that sort of orientation in some of the higher grade zones because there was a thing called like Colorado, which um, when, you know, my very first trip out there, mine and Mike's very first trip, we noticed these guys mining, we were quizzing them about, um, you know, what, what they were mining, these artisanal guys. Uh, and they said, oh, it's about two and a half, three meters thick and it's, it's you know, three or four kilogram silver. So we knew they were out there and we really sort of just jagged upon this one, um, tagged it in one of the holes testing Tahitos. It's, it's interesting, the more we drill in that area, um, you know, the more veins we find, blind veins that we had no idea. We found Josephine, of course, which, um, you know, we've now uh, done some trial EM over and it shows that extends for that full length all the way in parallel to the Napoleon vein. Um, Dick Silito was out there a few months ago, uh, back in October. Um, you know, I've known Dick for 20 years. Dick's never, ever liked a project of mine in, 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 in my life. Um, so to get him out there and have, have him uh, confirm that he really liked what we had was good. But one of his recommendations was in that so whole southwest corner, go and drill a, a couple of fences of holes all the way along, overlapping, so that you tag everything all the way through. Right. And he said, you might be surprised uh, by what you see. And, you know, Josephine was just a, a, a thing we jagged by stepping out and trying to drill deeper down in Napoleon. Kapala the same on the Tahitos vein. Um, the interesting thing about that Kapala vein is it's quite thick, blows out to yeah. a serious 40 metres plus thickness in some parts. So that could add serious ounces very, very quickly. Today's results, you know, eight metres of that uh, was at uh, an ounce gold equivalent or about 2,100 gram silver equivalent. Yeah. Um, so fabulously high grade over very thick intercepts. So I, I think, and it slopes off to the southwest uh, away from the town of Kapala and away from uh, Tahito. So, you know, that, that's a very exciting discovery. New I think it's a discovery. I, I, is there a rig or two? I mean, I, I assume it's safe to assume you're still poking holes or given the kind of stuff you've been pulling out. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah we, <laughs> for sure, for sure. We, I think we had really three spectacular hits in that news release today. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I would be surprised if there isn't more to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and just so if the viewers that don't recognize the name, Dick Silito, Richard Silito is kind of the, the, the godfather of the epithermal geologic model. I mean, the, the classic model that everybody refers to and uses, and this is where we are in the model and stuff. It's Dick Solito's model. Yeah, He's yeah, kind yeah. of the guy. He so, is the guy. I think yeah. the, the grading, greatest living geologist anyway. I right. yeah, yeah, admire the bloke immensely, so to have that approval. And Okay, so another thing I want to ask you about, because a lot of subscribers ask about it, I mean, I'm not losing any sleep over this myself, but I know one of the things with Panuco one of the things that makes Visa so attractive is when they bought this project, 
This was a project, it's, it's got a small mill on it, but as importantly, arguably more importantly, um, most of the permits you would need for mining in several areas are already there. And anybody who follows and owns mining companies knows, you know, if there's anything that's just been a horror show for the last decade or more, it's permitting. You guys are like way ahead of the game because of the, the tenure that you've got there. But I do get asked a lot like, okay, well, if you guys have a mill and they get this, they get that, you know, how come they're not trying to mine it right away? I mean, and I know the decision tree to, to decide mm. where you start and the kind of scale you mine and stuff. It, it's not as simple as it looks. And let's let's remember, guys, they only had a resource as of like a week ago. Yeah. And you can't really do anything before that. So yeah. just what, in terms of the company management thinking, like what do you need to do to get to that decision? Yeah, th so there's a few key things there. Of course, you know, first things first, resource. You need yeah. to have the, the ounces there proven up. Um, that will convert to reserves. Uh, you need to have in place your Ahito agreement. So you right. need to be able to access the land and have agreements with the community. Well, we've now got three of those, the key ones in place. That gives us 35 years of, uh, of life with those partners on the ground so we can build the project on that basis. Uh, you need uh, a mining permit and you need a mill, a permitted mill. Well, we've got a permitted mill. There are other permitted mills in the area that we, we like the look of. We can't say too much about that, of course, but watch this space. We're right. working on a few things there. Um, and then the mining permits, as you mentioned, there are certain areas that are already permitted for mining. I don't think that covers everything we need to do. But Mexico, relatively straightforward to go and get uh, mining permitted. And of course, we've got that very high grade core close to the surface at the centre of Panuka. I think. Don't quote me on this, but there's about 13 million ounces, 14 million ounces, a bit over 600 grams per ton. Right, that's uh, gallon so error, is it? Gallon, gallon error, error gallon yep. error. Yep. Um, that's very close to an actual operating mill uh, that's there already. So we're, we're weighing all of those things up. You can't, um, you know, you don't want to rush into it. I know Mike hints that, you know, we could have per, uh, mining going on sooner than anyone expects. Yeah. You, you know, that gives a hint as to what we're thinking. I think. Uh, you know, we've had the idea that a lot of people say, well, why don't you, you've got so many targets and so many ounces to prove up, keep going and drilling, which is it'd be bloody very helpful if we if we pay for some of that exploration work out of cash flow. Right. So I think, you know, over the past few months, we've really got our head around that. We're, uh, you know, not singularly focused, but certainly obsessed by the idea of getting into production sooner rather than later. Right. So, uh, you know, we'll keep working through that. I think you'll see uh, at some point late this year, early next year, something of a PEA. Right. Um, and, but, but, you know, because it's such a low cost approach to mining, probably actually don't need uh, a full feasibility study to go into production. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I know, uh, as, I, as, as I think you know, I mean, I, I followed the original Silvercrest, the current version of Silvercrest, I followed from the day of, yep. It listed and I pounded, I did everything but call my subscribers broker and put the bloody order in for them because it was, it was, it was, it was about as obvious a buy as I ever saw. But one of the things, one of the things that was interesting about Silvercrest, they get to the position and I would argue that Visa is kind of there now as well, where I remember when they were kind of getting close to making that production decision and they're kind of working on permits in the background and stuff. And, uh, there was this period where the market was obsessing about, as they always do when a mining company gets to this stage, you know, what's the finance package going to look like? Like how much debt, I mean, how much dilutions are going to be? And I can remember telling subscribers back then, like, and I intend, I meant there's a joke at the time where I said, you know, Eric, I'll probably just do an overnight bought deal to pay for the mill. He did an overnight bought deal to pay for the mill. <laughs> um, and frankly, given the kind of capital numbers we're probably looking at at Panuco, Craig could probably do an overnight bought deal to pay for the mill. It's not, you get a lot of leeway, we, a lot of flexibility. I think you're right. I think you, you're spot on. You know, it'd be nice to have a debt piece if yeah. we need it. But, but you know, I, what was Eric's capex there? 110, 120 million. I don't yeah. think ours would be anywhere near that. Like, you know, yeah. it will be a fraction of that, particularly if we can buy another mill or use our, the old cocoa mill. So, um, it won't be a lot of money, is it, it, you know. I think we'd finance it very readily. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think it'd be hard at all. Yeah, but I love that idea of funding. You know, we've got thirteen rigs turning. Our burn's probably about two million dollars a month as we speak. We're a pretty solid burn rate. Yeah. But funding that work going forward out of uh, out of cash flow would be a brilliant outcome for shareholders. So we are focused on on doing that work and getting there as soon as we can. Okay, mm. sounds good. I mean. 
great story, great project, great management team. They put out a really good resource. There'll be another one coming. Like Craig said, 13 rigs going 120,000 meters this year. Just great news flow as far as the eye can see from here on out. Visa Resources, VZLA on the venture and VZLA on NYSE Amex. Thanks for coming by, Craig. Good on you. Thanks, Eric. Much yep. appreciated.